In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Google Slides to create an animation of any chemical reaction that you'd like. So before you get started creating your animation, there's an add-on that you will need to add to your Google Slides. So start by opening up a blank Google Slides and going up here to the top where it says add-ons. You click on add-ons and select get add-ons. It will open up this dialog box and you will simply search Creator Studio. It should come up as a suggestion and you will click on this. The image will look like this and all we'll want to do is select it and click install. Go through the installation process by clicking continue and then putting in your credentials. Remember to make sure that you're using your VCPS login and then give it permission to do all of the things that it needs. Then it will simply install and give you this reading telling you that it's been installed. You can click done and now we're ready to get started with using Creator Studio to animate. So now that you've downloaded and added the add-on necessary to create our animation, we're ready to jump in and look at how to actually create the animation of a chemical reaction. So first, let's take a look at an example of an animation that I created to give you an idea of what our end goal is. So by using Google Slides and the Creator Studio add-on, you will be able to create a video or a GIF showing, like the one on the screen, any chemical reaction that you'd like to represent. The animation that you just saw and those that you will be creating is a form of stop motion animation. Stop motion, kind of suggested by the name, is a type of animation technique which uses objects that are being manipulated bit by bit in small increments and individually photographed frames which are then mushed together to give the illusion of movement. Using the Google Slides, that's exactly what we will be creating in order to produce our animation. To give you an idea of what stop motion animation really looks like, let's take a peek at a quick example. So as you can see in the video, the M&Ms are actually being moved and manipulated and many, many, many different images are being taken, which is then edited together into a video, which brings about the illusion of these M&Ms moving. So now that we know the type of animation that we're using and how we'll be doing it, let's bring it back into the realm of science and talk about how we will use this form of animation to animate a chemical reaction. So you'll remember from our previous lessons that a chemical reaction takes place when old or original substances called reactants have their bonds broken apart, their atoms rearranged, ultimately resulting in the formation of new substances called products. These substances have the same atoms which have been rearranged into new configurations and new bonds formed, producing a new substance with completely different properties than the original substances. You also remember that the law of conservation of mass tells us that matter cannot be created or destroyed, meaning that the type and number of atoms present after a reaction is the same as the type and number of atoms present before the reaction, the only difference being the arrangement or the configuration of those atoms. So now we're ready to look at how to actually use Google Slides and Creator Studio to create an animation of any given chemical reaction. So first, what we wanna do is we want to set the stage for what our animation is going to look like. So what we wanna do is we wanna set up a slide that actually shows the start of where our animation will happen. This means that we start with a blank slide. And we need to start by adding our reactants because we know that this is what we have present when a chemical reaction starts. We then want to show, using the stop motion technique, how those reactants are reconfigured into ultimately the products of the reaction. So now let's go ahead and look at how we will actually perform this. First, what we wanna do is create again, the starting product. So we're gonna take an example 
of looking at the reaction between hydrogen peroxide that produces water and oxygen. So first what I want to do is again start with a slide that shows only my reactants or only the substances that I start with in the reaction. I got a little head start here in preparation for this video and created one molecule of hydrogen peroxide. Now I'm going to walk you through step by step how you can create the reactants for any reaction that you want to model. So we're gonna use the shape function in Google Slides to create both the circles to represent my atoms and the lines to represent my bonds. So what you wanna do is come up to the insert option in your menu and come down to shape. It will give you another drop down option. And you'll follow it down to shapes. Of course, we want a circle, so I'll come down here to this first option in the second column and select oval. Now you should, if you've clicked the correct button, see this little cross cursor pop up. Now all you need to do is go ahead and click and drag until you have the appropriate size circle that you'd like. Then you simply release and you have your circle. Now let me show you how you can format your circles or your atoms in order to make them aesthetically look the way you want them to. So we have a few things that we can do here. Up here, I of course can change the color of my circle. We know that when possible, we can color code our models to make them more clear. So in my example, I'm choosing red as my fill color to represent my oxygen atoms. So I'll go ahead and fill it in red. Another thing that I can do is actually change the outline or the border color by clicking border color. Now it's up to you, I can make my border color the same color as my circle if you like that look. For me, I chose black, okay? I like a little bit more definition. And then I also can change the thickness or the weight of that line. I believe I selected 3x to give me that appearance of a thicker border. Now, of course, we know that it's not a molecular molecule if my atoms are not labeled. So now I want to go ahead and actually add the label to represent the element that that atom represents. So in my case, I'm going to choose white as a font so that it sticks out from the red. I'm going to make it bold so it's nice and clear. And I'm going to simply label this with an O, showing me that that is meant to represent an oxygen atom. Now, you can use that same process to create as many different atoms as you need. Now let's look at how we need to create our lines to represent our bonds. So you want to come up here to this top row and you'll see here the option for a line. I'm gonna come down and all I want is a simple line, so I will select line. Now. Again, I will see that cross type cursor that shows me I'm ready to uh, draw a shape and I can simply drag my mouse until my line is the correct shape, direction, et cetera, that I'd like. So I'm going to straighten it out a little shorter. You can edit that line after you add it. All you have to do is select it and you can drag it and make corrections, okay? And then we have my line to represent my bond. Now again, I can also come in and change the color or the line weight. I do like to make them a little thicker myself. So in this example, I'm using a line weight of four. And then you would continue using the same process to create every molecule present in your reactants. In the example that we're looking at today, I am using the reaction of hydrogen peroxide decomposing into oxygen and uh, water. So in my example, there's actually two molecules of hydrogen peroxide present. So let me show you one last trick to how you can save time in creating your animations. So I already have this beautiful, complete hydrogen peroxide that has certain sizes and uh, formatting. So to save myself the time and make sure that my molecules look consistent, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight around that molecule, which will allow me to select that whole image. I'm then going to copy and paste that whole image. So now that I've copied and pasted it, while that blue select square is still surrounding the whole molecule, make sure you don't click outside of this. I'm going to grab, oh boy, and drag. And now, I have two perfect symmetrical molecules of hydrogen peroxide that are ready for me to start my animation. Just gonna move them around. Again, how you set them up is up to you. Now our job is to use this stop motion animation technique to show the course of my chemical reaction from these starting products all the way, from these reactants all the way to my final products. So now let me go ahead and show you how to do that. 
So instead of taking lots of individual photographs, like in classic stop motion animation, we are going to be creating lots of individual slides. Those are what we'll be piecing together to create the illusion of the motion. So the first step in creating your animation is to go ahead and duplicate your original slide. Now, this labeling here was simply uh, there for me to show you and walk you through what should be there. So I'm gonna get rid of that because we don't actually want to have that in our final product. So once I go ahead and duplicate my slide, now is when the animation part takes place. So what we know takes place in a chemical reaction is that bonds are broken apart in the reactants and atoms are rearranged. So what we wanna do is create individual slides showing the progression of that taking place. So once you duplicate a slide, what you're going to do is slightly manipulate or move whatever you need to move in that example. In this case, I might show some bonds starting to break, okay? Because we know that that's what first takes place in a chemical reaction. Then I will continue this process of duplicating the slide that I have just manipulated and then making small incremental changes to the next slide. In this case, I'm gonna show my bonds simply disappearing because we know that before a chemical reaction or when a chemical reaction begins taking place, the first thing that needs to happen is those bonds are broken. And again, I will just continue the same process and begin making the changes that I know need to take place. Eventually, once I have moved and shown the course of the reaction as much as I'd like to, I of course will need to show the new products being formed. So that is when we will of course have to repeat what we did for the reactants, but in this case, producing the final products. So let me very quickly show you how I will do that. <laughs> So the very last thing that we wanna do once I have my product configuration represented as I like, in this case with two molecules of water and one molecule of O2, I will go ahead and add in the appropriate bonds because we know that once a chemical reaction is complete, new bonds are formed to create the final, react the final products in the reaction. And I would go ahead and add in all of my bonds. And at that point, your animation is complete. Now, the last thing that we need to do is go ahead and take our slides and create the animation from these stop motion frames that we've created. So how you'll go about doing that once you've completed your animation is to come up to add-ons, go to Creator Studio, and you wanna select Create GIF. Creator Studio will open up a dialog box here, which looks like this. Now it's up to you the interval that you choose. We'll wanna make it slow enough that we can actually see the progression of your animation, but not so slow that it's very, very choppy. I might suggest somewhere around one second, but you can play with it and decide the interval that you like. I'm then going to select Animated GIF and hit Go. This will then produce an animated GIF of your video, which you can then view or download. In your case, you will of course want to download it eventually to upload or to add to your slideshow. And that is how we use Google Slides to create a stop motion animation of any chemical reaction that you would like to represent.